everyone. Um, as Aretha mentioned, I'm Senior Director New Services Development. I'm part of the Solutions and Services team at TechSoup. Um, and our team basically works on digital transformation solutions for nonprofits. So we're a little different from the product donations and discounts that you're probably more familiar with at TechSoup. Um, the digital assessment tool is one of the solutions that we have built to help organizations with their digital planning. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm excited to, uh, to take you through how to use the tool um, to do your digital planning. So in this webinar, we have a lot to cover. So I'm going to try my best to speed through but be, um, be clear um, with all of these steps. So I'm going to go through a little bit around digital transformation and why it's different for nonprofits. Um, the framework that we actually built at TechSoup to help nonprofits um, think through their digital transformation. Um, how to use the framework and the guides that we've created to help you and your team do better planning and strategy. And then finally, a live demo of the digital assessment tool and uh, an explanation of how it all comes together, how the tool will actually help you come up with the right recommendations. Um, so the first part, digital transformation, what it is and how is it different for nonprofits? So I love, love, love this cartoon because I think this pretty much encompasses the last five years for me when we first started talking digital transformation. Uh, everyone knows it's a top priority, but no one can explain exactly what it is. Um, I think this is really important and more important for nonprofits because a lot of digital transformation, the definitions has always been defined by the enterprise, right? So, so if you went in and you tried to look for definitions, they would all have things like efficiency and revenue and profit, but it's difficult to connect that kind of technology investment into your mission. So we spent quite a lot of time in TechSoup trying to think about how do we define digital transformation um, for nonprofits. So um, basically, the easy definition is that digital transformation increases nonprofit digital capacity, the functional capabilities, so that you can meet your mission goals and increase your impact. So what's really important here is, you know, it's it's really not about the tech you embrace, right? It's about your capabilities, it's about your capacity, about your resiliency, and it's about increasing your impact. So do more mission and impact with less staff, money, and time. Um, so very quickly before I move forward, I would love to have a poll of the participants here. Um, as to whether your organization has a plan. Um, let's give it a minute. All right, uh, Aretha, would you mind sharing the results? Yes, are you able to see them? Yes, I am, thank you. So, um, you know, in this group, we have about 62 participants. 68% uh, don't have a plan, 17% are not sure if you have a plan, and then 9% know they have a plan but not sure what it is. Only three participants have a well-defined and well-communicated plan. So, um, I think this is the right webinar. Uh, you're all in the right place. And I hope that at the end of this 60 minutes, um, you at least have a path to move towards getting a plan. Thank you so much. Um, so if you, um, do I just remove the poll? I got it. You see it gone? No, I still see it. Okay, it should go in a minute because I removed it. I ended the poll. Somebody said you don't have an option for a sort of have a plan. <laughs> That's true. That's true. I'm going to add that option in. So, um, 
you know, if you could raise your hands, how many of you sort of have a plan? All right, we've got nine. Okay, that's awesome. So there's nine participants that we haven't captured that sort of have a plan. All right, so I'm gonna move us to the next slide, um, which is really, so we said nonprofit digital transformation is different from the enterprise digital transformation because it's really about capacity, capability, resiliency, and getting you to do more impact with less resources. Now, what's tough about digital transformation is because it has this big word transformation in there, um, it's just not about adding new technology and tools. You know, if we're really talking about transformation, if we're really talking about building resiliency, the organization has to invest in people, process, and technology. And you can see in this graph, you know, all three aspects have to work together for the transformation to happen. Now, what do we mean by people? Really, we mean the culture of the organization driven by leadership and skills. So how do your staff relate to and understand technology? The relate, relate to is really important, right? Because it has to do with what the work that they're doing and the impact that they're delivering. Processes is how is the technology used? The formal policies and workflows are really important because most of the technology that we use wasn't built for nonprofits in the first place. So, you know, there's a lot of adaptability, there's a lot of contextualization that we have to do for our own organization. So coming up with the processes that everyone can follow is really important. And then finally, the technology. Um, you need tools and digital solutions, absolutely. Um, but, you know, just remembering that you cannot just have technology. So you just can't bring in Salesforce for your new CRM without thinking through how is your staff relating to it and using it and, and you know, what are the processes that you have in place for it. So digital transformation is complex and it's hard. First of all, the journey is intense, right? Because most people think digital transformation is just around purchasing tech and implementing tech. Right. But the, rea the reality is, in order to do this properly, you probably have to do all of these steps. You've got to identify your needs. You've got to make a plan. You've got to figure out what that tech is. You've got to work with a consultant. You've got to train your staff. You've got to manage that tech. And guess what? Technology changes every two months now, I think. So you've got to keep improving it. So it's hard. It takes a lot of time and attention. On top of it, without a proper strategy, when you want to digitally transform, your team is basically expected to juggle their current mission delivery and program in addition to being part of this very complex flow, right? So this makes buy-in and follow-through really difficult. You know, I bet there's a lot of you that have started a digital plan and then it just kind of petered out because it's so hard, you know, without the buy-in of the entire team and without everyone being understanding how that strategy affects them, it is difficult to do to complete those projects and have follow through. So your organization's digital plan cannot succeed without alignment with your mission and priorities. And that's really critical. Your staff needs to understand how are their skills, processes um, going to be transformed? How are you investing in it? And what is the plan to do so? So before we move forward, a second poll. So first one was around whether you have a plan. Second one, who's responsible for the digital plan? So let's give it another minute. Very interesting. Okay, I think everyone's results are in. Um, all right.
right. So this is pretty well distributed with the majority of the decisions being made by either the ED or the IT staff. Um, it's interesting that 15% of the organizations have fundraising and developing team members. Uh, and then the other is a 31%, which, which I'd be interested to know a little more about. But you can see, you know, from this poll, even from this group of 80 folks, that basically the entire digital transformation decision itself is quite distributed, right? Um, some people have the IT staff who make it and they have other challenges. Fundraising team have other challenges. Um, so again, it's not, you know, it's a difficult decision uh, to make and to implement in the organization. Um, okay. So last poll I promise is your organization's digital plan aligned with your mission? Um, Arita, I think this is the first poll. Oh. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. My bad. I, I read the wrong thing. Okay. My, my apologies. All right, so 72% don't have a plan. Um, all right, and then, so what's really nice is that the eight folks, and I think this must be the same folks who either had sort of had a plan or were very clear about their plan. They know exactly how the digital strategy will improve the organization's impact, which is fantastic. Um, and then there are some that don't know or they're not sure how it affects the entire organization, but they do know how it improves their work, which is also fantastic. Um, thank you so much for participating in these polls. Um, all right. So moving on to the framework, right? So we went through the, through the definition of digital transformation and we saw in our own group um, you know, it's a difficult decision. Not everyone has a plan. So what is the framework and how do you use it? Now, because it is so difficult to align digital transformation with your mission, and often organizations think about digital transformation pretty reactively. I need a CRM. Let me go get it now. And then you're stuck with the CRM that needs a lot of time and attention. And then you retroactively start thinking about your process, how it fit in. So instead, uh, TechSoup came up with a digital transformation framework that we hope will help you think through, um, you know, what your digital transformation plan and priorities should be. So the framework is fairly simple. And if you think about it as a plan, it has three stages. It's basically what is your goals for digital transformation? What is your strategy? And then finally, what are your tactics and plans? So the framework starts with your org mission, right? So that's that's really important. The intention of this is to get your whole team in this exercise to go through these worksheets together. So, you know, your org mission, your impact goals are the starting point for any kind of plan you make, your beneficiaries. This is really important because we often forget, um, you know, how the delivery of impact affects the beneficiaries. So, you know, keeping them front and center is also really important. Strategic goals. Now, this is really important to think through what are your priorities as an organization for the next three years? We recommend not going beyond one to three years because then your digital transformation plans become less tangible. So come up with your strategic goals and your priorities for the next one to three years. Now, based on those goals, we have six focus areas or functional capabilities um, that we recommend all organizations um, look at for their digital transformation. So it's pro your program delivery and management, fundraising and development, communications and marketing, operations and collaboration, digital security, hardware and infrastructure. What's missing here, you might notice, is data. 
And that's because data is so integral to everything that we're doing now, especially as we've all moved to the cloud, especially as we're all remote, that each of these functional capabilities actually has data embedded into it. So these six standard focus areas cover 90% of all of the topics that you, you need to think about in your organization. So for example, the programs delivery and management, um, you know, we, we talk about program management, we talk about service delivery, we talk about, you know, program insights, we talk about monitoring and evaluation. So it all, it contains all of those things. So basically, the framework grounds all transformation plans into your mission and strategic goals. It provides you with a very easy way to think about, out of these six, which are the two maximum three areas that you want to focus on to meet those goals. And then when you go through the worksheet, it provides you details of within those sections, the areas that match your, your priorities so you can come up with your tactics and your actions. Um, now, the tactics is specific things that you should do. Like, I'm going to implement Salesforce as my CRM. Because I'm implementing Salesforce as my CRM, I have to implement trainings. I have to come up with a policy. I have to come up with processes. All of these are your tactics. And this is where the digital assessment tool helps you uh, to kind of with their recommendations of exactly what you should be doing. So the framework, like I mentioned, is meant to be used with your entire team. So in order to help you use it and do this, have this conversation with your team, we've come up with a digital planning guide. The digital planning guide basically takes you step by step through the framework and helps you build out your, your goals, your uh, prioritize the focus areas, the sub areas within those focus areas, come up with tactics, and finally figure out what are the resources you need. What are the courses, the software, the hardware, the policies, and the services? This is an example of, of this is a very short summary example of what this might look like, right? So, um, you know, for example, you might have an organization, um, and I took this from the web, they're a food pantry, and they say, we make great food for all people to support a better food system. We demonstrate fair business practices by providing a quality workplace and creating delicious, dignified food for our community. So, you know, if you think you're in this food pantry, the strategic goals that you have to think through for the next one to three years, their strategic goal was to increase funds through online events by 20%. Um, to help the org achieve its fundraising goal of 1 million in 2022. Increase, and the second goal was increase awareness of the organization um, with increase of 30% in food orders. So very specific goals. Now, based on these goals, you know, when once the team goes through it, really what they picked on two areas of focus based on their priorities was fundraising and communications, right? And what that did was, you know, it helps you focus in and it kind of, you can put the rest as a lower priority. This is important, right? Because when you're thinking about digital transformation, you often think about the entire org. And you have all of these things that you have to do. And it's difficult to know what are the two things I really need to do. And this is what this guide kind of helps you do it. So once this all went through this, you know, they're able to pick fundraising and communications. Because it's clear their strategic goals are basically to do more fundraising and build more awareness. Now, in that guide, we also make you check and think through a process of what are your highest risk factors. And when this org went through that, right, one risk factor was security. So the third priority or focus area they picked was security. So what do they do with this? Once they have this, they can actually go into the digital assessment tool and assess their organization's current capabilities in these three areas. And what that does is it tells them exactly where they are today. What is it that they're doing right? What is it that they're doing wrong? What needs the most improvement? So the tool helps them assess each of these areas. It gives them a score so they know how they did. And it gives them recommendations based on their responses. So they can actually see what are the next steps that they might take. 
So this is a little bit about the the kind of uh, planning worksheets and guides that we have in um, that are included in the guide. Now I will be sharing this deck um, at the end of this presentation. We will share a PDF of, of this, so you have this available with you. I'm also going to share how you can get the guide. The guide is actually a 30 page guide. So what I have here are just simple examples of how you know the guide might be used. Um, the digital planning guide is available for free. Uh, it's available at this link. Again, we will share the link with you. If you just simply request guide, um, you know, it's a, it's a free download that you can download and start uh, going through, sharing with your team, perhaps highly recommend that you find, you know, two or three team members that you can work on those worksheets together. Um, also, this link is actually the link to the assessment tool. And if you go into our landing page, you will see that we have tons and tons of resources. You know, uh, there is a feature guide. We have gl a glossary of, uh, you know, uh, of terms that we use to explain the framework, their definitions. So all of that is available on the tool. So, you know, I have actually... Um, I have a lot of um, uh, information that I've thrown your way. So before I move further, because the, the last part of this webinar is really about the tool and the live demo, I'd like to stop for any questions that you might have. So Jeffrey Barks just asked um, in the chat, is there someone who can facilitate this for our organization? I was just ready to answer him, but I'll let you answer, Mona. Um, we haven't done a uh, facilitation yet, but um, it's something that we can certainly do. What we have done before is through the TechSoup courses programs, um, you know, we have done courses where uh, we've taken groups of nonprofits through that entire process of, of the worksheet. So I'd be happy to provide you with the details at the end of this call. Awesome. I think that's it for now. Awesome, thank you so much. All right, so moving on to the tool, I'd like to give you a quick primer. So how can the nonprofit, how can your nonprofit use the digital assessment tool? So the assessment tool really does three things. It assesses your needs, and it does that in the six areas that are part of the framework, right? So you can assess your needs in programs, fundraising, communications, operations, security, and infrastructure. It helps you understand your digital capability. So every time you finish an assessment, it actually gives you a rating. And that rating is what we call the digital capability score. That rating is important because when we came up with the score and the logic behind that, we actually considered the people, process, and technology. So the assessment doesn't ask you, do you have a CRM technology? The assessment asks you, do you use a cloud CRM? Is your staff trained? How do you use it? How often do you update your process? So you'll find that in this assessment, a lot of our questions are longer and very use cases based. So it might take you some time to go through it, but you'll find that they, we have put several use cases. So it's easier for you to figure out, you know, which is the right answer or which is the category you fit in so that you get a relevant and appropriate score. Now, um, after you're done the assessment and you get the score, you also get recommendations. So depending on how you responded, you know, you might have responded that you have a cloud CRM, but none of your staff is trained, for example. Then we give you recommendations of courses, of webinars, of resources that you can start using to start training your staff. So it's a fairly intense tool. Our intention of building this tool was to help small orgs that are not able to afford IT consultants to help them with their digital planning to use a free online tool that helps them do the, kind of the same thing, right? So it won't be perfect. It won't be exactly like having a consultant in there with you. But this goes a long way to assess your needs to let you know how well you're doing and to give you recommendations that are relevant. So, you know, the framework that we just went through, the assessment tool goes through exactly that framework. We have questions in each category about 
all of these topics that I mentioned. So if you were looking to assess your fundraising, you know, we have questions about donor management, donor engagement, funder management, fundraising event management, as well as impact evaluation data. So, you know, if they're pretty comprehensive assessments. And remember, each time we ask you anything about donor management, we're checking what is your staff training, what are the processes, what are your policies, what are your governance policies, etc. So it's pretty comprehensive. The digital capability model actually is in five stages. So the score that you get is between one and five. And this um, actually um, is... You know, what we say is it's for the stage of your digital capability. So we call it ad hoc, functional, standardized, optimized, and adaptive. So you can see here how deep the scoring is. We are actually scoring you for your technology culture, your skills training, your organizational processes, your approach to technology, your state of technology, as well as your data systems. All of these elements go into us giving you a score for every assessment. And the score tells you what level of capability are you, starting with ad hoc, where, you know, you don't really have any standard processes. Everyone's kind of doing their own thing, following whatever processes they have, through to adaptive, which is an organization that has not only optimized how they utilize technology, their culture in their organization, but also um, how quickly they adapt to new technologies as they come up. So this is the digital capability model. Uh, this is a little bit of an insight you have to how, you know, how it's scored. But when you go into the tool, you'll basically get a score directly when you finish an assessment. Now, the digital assessment tool aims to, you know, the whole point of this is that you have conversations within your organization. You know, you have this guide, you include your team, your priorities into your digital planning, um, you assess yourself, you get recommendations, and then you're able to take that list of recommendations and have a conversation about what makes sense for you to do next, which are the items that you want to be able to do. And the, the tool actually provides links to all of these resources. So, you know, we know tech soup is an ocean. It's difficult sometimes to find things because we have so much. Um, but the tool makes it easy because, you know, once you pick your recommendations, you can go into your dashboard and literally click, click through um, and get access to these. Um, so you can use these recommendations to now build your tactics, right? So this was the plan that we had initially done for, this, for the food pantry. So you can see, depending on the recommendations they get now, previously, you know, they wanted to do fundraising event management because they wanted to raise one million dollars in 2022. Um, and they said, you know, that they wanted to do three online fundraising events. So the tool recommendations gives them training for online event management. It gives them recommendations for what kind of technologies they should use and provides them with policies that they need to implement if they want to do it. So this is an example of how you can slowly build your entire plan and tactics for digital transformation. The second thing that I want to mention about the tool is you can take an assessment as many times as you like. Because it is meant to be a scoring mechanism, right? And it, it kind of provides you almost like your credit score. Every time you make a change, if you went in and read that assessment and recorded that change in your responses, you'll get a new rating. So the intention is that not only are you able to do an assessment to figure out what your current state is or what your base state is, you can go in, use resources, make the change, come back, reassess yourself, and get new ratings and new recommendations based on where, what position you're in. So our intention is to give you recommendations that are customized to your responses and where you are at. So... Uh, I'm going to move on to the live demo, but before I do, any any questions? Yes, uh, Mark said, what skills would a facilitator need to conduct an analysis? Should other models be used as well to triangulate results? I think you probably answered that earlier, but when you just went over that. Um, so, so I'm guessing it's to figure out what is the right recommendations to use. Um, 
I would say that it's a combination of an understanding your current tech state. So the tool recommends the technology based on the tech state that you suggested. So for example, if you're a, a two member organization with a budget size of 100,000, the tool will never recommend Salesforce as your CRM, right? Because, because it's just, it needs a lot more resources and management uh, than your org can probably afford. So there is stuff like that built into the tool that will help you uh, with the recommendations. But I, I do think that you would need um, someone in your org to help you figure out, um, you know, so there's a matter of timing. Like, can you do all the trainings that we provide you? Because based on your recommendations, you might have 20 courses. So you would have to go in and make a judgment call on what is the most important course to do. And what I would recommend you do every time is go back to your worksheet. Look at what you picked as your priorities, right? Look at what you picked as your focus areas and then choose accordingly. Okay. And Claudia says, does TechSoup have services to facilitate the completion of the assessment tool? If yes, how much? And what range of time is usually needed? They're a small org of 14. So we don't have those services yet. Um, we have, so we don't have those services yet, but Claudia, if you need help, um, please, I have an email at the end of this, um, at the end of this presentation and we would love to help you. Okay. And Michelle said, if we do a reassessment, are your original scores and recommendations retained somewhere? Yes, they are. And I will be happy to show you in the, rec in the live demo. Okay. That's it for now, Mona. Awesome. Thank you for these questions. They're, they're just perfect. And you've set me up for this live demo beautifully. Um, so before I go into the live tool, um, there's a lot in that tool. And we have a little less than half an hour to go. So I'm just going to focus on five main features. Um, the first thing is an introductory assessment. Second is how you can invite colleagues in. Because the tool itself is meant to be used by your entire team. Uh, the print capability that we have in the tool, um, your dashboard and how you can use it, and then a couple of features like software comparisons. All right. So uh, I'm going to just show you the intro assessment because I, since I already have a login with the tool, I don't need to do the intro assessment anymore. But basically, the introductory assessment, we built it to provide you a baseline assessment. So what we heard when we did these six assessments, we heard a lot from organizations where, you know, they did not want to finish the complete, complete six assessments in order to understand how their org was doing. So think of the intro assessment as a 25-minute assessment that gives you a quick baseline of where you are as an org overall. It's just 20 questions. A lot of the questions are taken from all of the detailed assessments. But when you build, make your first account, when you build, get your account for the first time, the tool forces you to do an intro assessment. And that's so you can get a baseline idea of what your digital capability is before you do a deep dive into other assessments. So I am going to now open up the digital assessment tool. Can everyone, uh, Aretha, can you see the, the landing page? Yes, I can see it. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So this is this is what the home page of the digital assessment tool looks like. And you know, you can see there's reams of information around who should use it, why you should use it, how you can communicate with your board about it, the benefits of the tool. Um, and you know, I, I want to point to these resources because uh, I think a lot of you have been asking about how to use the tool, help with use the tool. So notice that we have, so if you click here, we have training videos. Um, and, you know, what we did was create videos for each of the six areas. So you can actually review it. It gives you a primer of how you think about those areas. We have the glossary. We have blogs that help you figure out, you know, how to use the framework, how to use the, the you know, the guide. Um, you know, it says how, what it means for your nonprofit and how you get started. Um, then the other thing that I want to show you is when you go through um, – the home page, and you come right to the bottom, there's an FAQ. Um, and these are the most commonly asked questions. So we've just added them in here. But most importantly is your request guide. So you can click here. It's very few details, submit request. Um, and you'll get 
the download of the guide that you can then use, share with your teammates and start um, thinking about your digital transformation plan. All right, so I am going to log in now. I have a phenomenal email flying robot, my absolute favorite type of robot. Um, all right, so this is the dummy account that I set up and actually I set it up to test the tool with my team. <laughs> so you see there's a big team that we've been working together um, on the digital assessment. Now, the first thing I want to point out to you, when you log in, the first place you look at is your dashboard. This is the dashboard that your org administrator will see. So the whoever gets the first account, sets up the first account in the digital assessment tool is an administrator. You can choose another administrator later. But the idea of the admin is that the admin can then invite other folks into the tool. Um, so when you look at the dashboard, the first thing is right up top, organization goals. So the intention is when you go through the digital planning guide and you've figured out what your three or four priorities are, you write them in here so that everyone who comes in the tool, does these assessments, is constantly reminded of what your organization goals are. So when you're actually building your tactics or choosing recommendations, like you said, you're referring to your own priority. Um, the second thing that it has in here is your overall, overall rating. So this rating is given when all six of the assessments are done or when the introductory assessment is done. Again, the reason why we separated the assessments is for ease of use. We did not want to force you to do 80 questions. We wanted you to figure out what your focus areas are and then just do those assessments. We highly recommend that you do all six because it gives you a perspective and a view of your organization that you might not have, but you don't need to. You can choose which ones you want to do. And then for every assessment you do, you can see your score is displayed right there. It tells who completed it and where. So I'll go into the assessments a little later, just reviewing the dashboard. So, the, so you see your org goals, you see your rating, you see your assessments, you see your recommendations, and you see your entire team. So this is a dashboard that brings together who from your organization is working on it, what are the assessments you've done, and then what does the tool recommend that you do next? So I'm gonna go quickly into a, an assessment to show you what that experience looks like. So there was a question about whether previous assessments are retained. So when the admin opens up any assessment, you can see these are the current results, so they can see the results. They can assign anyone to do the assessment again. So, you know, what we kept hearing from nonprofits was while, say, for example, the executive director starts the assessment, right? Because a lot of executive directors do build the digital plan in the organization. When they start the assessment, they hit up against questions because these questions are very specific to how your org uses the technology. So they might hit up against a question that they don't know the answer to. So they can do two things. They can ask the person for the answer and then come back and fill it in. Or they can assign that person this assessment. So that person can then, you know, the expert in that particular area can then do the assessment. So the intention is to make it easy for you to get the right answers into your assessment. Oh, sorry. I think... I pressed the wrong button. Okay, hopefully you can still see this. All right, the second thing I want to show you is previous results. So the question, can I see previous results? So if you click on previous results, you can see all of the assessment responses that were previously provided. You can see the score that you received and you can see the recommendation. Okay. You can also view recommendations by top recommendations. This is based on what you responded. So, for example, you know, there might be areas where you have no security features. So, the tool actually prioritizes security really high. So, we would say, you know, that's a top recommendation. You've got to build your security, um, you know, tool sets and features into your organization operations. The second thing that I want to mention to you uh, is... Uh, look at look at how the recommendations are laid out, right? So this is for digital marketing, but it provides you kind of with what the recommendation is and the article. 
uh, what type of recommendation is. So when you're looking at it, you can see, is it a blog? Is it a webinar? You don't need to click through to do it, right? Um, you can also, um, so in communications and marketing, you have these subcategories, right? So you have digital marketing as a subcategory. You have marketing insights. So the recommendations are also then uh, aligned to the categories and subcategories. So all of this was built with the guide in mind, right? So now when you're looking at the guide, you can easily come into your recommendations and check them off. You can say, oh, okay, so within marketing insights, you know, I think I need something for marketing insights. So maybe I'll do a Google Analytics course, or maybe I'll just use an article. Right? So these are options, but the whole idea was that we, we have a single framework, everything's built to that framework, and it's easy for you to connect the dots and find what you need. <coughs> All right, so that was about the team. You can manage your team here. You can assign recommendations to your team. Um, I'm going to restart this assessment, which I had actually started. You can go to any question in the assessment and check it out. Now, what I want to mention here about every assessment you do is there's an invite feature here. So you might be in the middle of an assessment and you realize that, hey, I need to invite someone else. You can click and you can invite any one of your team members. The second feature that I want to mention is print. Now, a lot of nonprofits came back to us and said that actually they want to have the assessment conversation uh, in a Zoom call with the entire team or in the office with the entire team. And they really want to have a printout of all of these options and questions. Um, so we actually provided a print option. So if you click through, you will find on a faster internet connection than I have at home, uh, that you can actually print this out as a PDF um, or, you know, you could, you could print it out. Um, and then use it to have the conversation with your team. Okay, so I'm going to exit out of it. All right, so that was for assessments. Uh, now I'd like to show you the recommendations. So in your recommendations tab, you will always see the top recommendations. Here are the overall recommendations, and then you can view all recommendations. What I want to mention here is your recommendations. So you can assign teammates assessments. You can also assign them recommendations. So an example would be, say, you had 30 recommendations ready for business insights. And that's a really important topic for you. You can go in and you can see, you know, this is an article. You think this article is important. And I think that it, my, you know, my colleague... Iqbal actually should read this article, right? Because Iqbal is the one that understands data. So you can assign it to him, to Iqbal. The recommendation will go to Iqbal in an email. And then when Iqbal logs in, you know, he can actually go into his dashboard and in his recommendations, he would have, he could see this. So I'm going to do the same thing and then assign something to myself so you can see how it gets uh, updated. So this is Farah, and I would say um, me, and I would assign it to me, right? So now, if I go into my dashboard and I look at my recommendations, I can see it. So again, it's for ease of use. When you assign certain things for your team members to do, they can actually go into your their recommendations and then see what they've been assigned them. Now, this is important because if you're an if you're an admin, you can also remind folks. So, as an admin, you know, remember we said you can go into overall recommendations, you can view all recommendations, and you can also see what's in progress. So, we just assigned this, so it's in progress, right? Um, you can see what's ready and has no assignees. So, again, this is for you to use. You can also search for a recommendation by the name if you knew it, but more importantly, I would say by assessment category. So say you really wanted to look at your fundraising um, recommendations, you could go in, look at the fundraising category, and then you can see by subcategory. So funder management, you have nine recommendations, donor engagement, 
uh, you have. So you don't have engage, you don't have recommendations in other areas because you performed well in them. Again, you can also look at your recommendations by what's ready for you to assign to folks, what's in progress, and what has been completed. Um, so that's an overview of um, kind of the functions and the features that are available to you through the digital assessment tool. Um, a couple of other features that I wanted to show you. So we went through the introductory assessment. We went through the print capability, the dashboard. Again, this deck is available to you. So when you actually are in the tool, you can refer to this if you needed to, um, you know, to kind of remind yourself what these uh, segments are. Um, another feature that we have is the software comparison feature. Um, this was added based on feedback that we received from nonprofits. I, I want to say it is useful in some cases. It's not, it's not uh, there for every single software. So I'm going to try and find um, a comparison, a software comparison if I can. Um, well, there we go. Um, so if we look at business analytics, and, you know, we offer you Power BI and Tableau. You could do a quick comparison and it will give you some basic information. Now, we have TechSoup information. So this is taken from the TechSoup catalog. But, you know, what it helps you is at least you don't have to go into the catalog and then find and search for this information. It will bring it up as the comparison directly. And then if you want to find out more, it has links to the catalog so you can go through. Uh, similarly, for other uh, recommendations, Say you wanted to look at a course. So let's look at this. Let's look at um, courses, right? So say we had a disaster preparedness course that is ready for. So if you click through this course, you could assign it or you could go into the course directly. So again, you know, these links go directly to where they're supposed to. You don't have to search for them. You can go into this course. You can see the details of the course. You can figure out if you want to do. You can also record the price. So as you're building your digital plan and you're figuring out what are the recommendations and the tactics that you really want to do, highly recommend note the price, note the amount of time it will take because then it will help you build a really tangible plan. Um, okay, so uh, these were five of the main features I think I... I showed you a couple more, like how to assign things to yourself. I highly recommend that you kind of use the tool, play around with it, experience the data for yourself. It's a free account. Take the assessments. You know, if you have any questions, please share them with us. Um, for any queries around help with the worksheet, help with the guide, help with the tool, please, um, you know, send us your questions at assessment at techsoup.org. Um, we are always, um, in fact, I man those tickets, so I'll be really happy to respond to any questions you have. So that's what I had. I wanted to leave 10 minutes in, in this webinar for your questions. Um, so we are open for questions. Okay, Mona, there were several questions about the login. Everybody's asking, I have a TechSoup login. Do I need a different login for this um, digital assessment tool? Yes. So the digital assessment tool is not connected with your TechSoup login. And the reason we did that, um, and I wanted to show you uh, what the login entails. So the reason we did that was because we wanted to make uh, the TechSoup login can only be used by authorized admins. And the intention of the digital assessment tool is for you to call, is for anyone to use it, first of all. Secondly, it's for you to be able to bring in any team member that you need. So, you know, even if they don't have a TechSoup login. So today, the digital assessment tool is not connected with your TechSoup login. Uh, and I'm going to show you, in order to get a login, uh, you would go to this website assessment, and then you simply click sign up. It's very, very easy to create an account. Just put your first name, last name. Highly recommend that you provide your org name, your EIN, your job function. And then when you click sign up, it sends you a, an activation email. It's kind of like an additional security feature to make sure there's a temp password and then you come back, set up your new password and you're up and running. 
Okay, and Rebecca said, how are the recommendation, recommendations determined and scores calculated? Oh, I'm so sorry. Is there, is there a human on the other end and evaluating <laughs> the answers? That's a great question. Uh, no, it's, it's, it's automated into the tool. So the tool has like a logic engine that we built. There were humans <laughs> who built the actual logic. Um, but it's pretty complex, right? Because we have 85 questions. Each question can have six responses. And, you know, we, we look at your budget size, your org size in order to give recommendations. So, no, it is not a human calculating on the back end. Uh, it's actually a logic engine. And, you know, what we've implemented is machine learning because what we really want is to get kind of your responses and be able to adapt, right? So remember I said the next time you do another assessment or you retake an assessment, you'll get a new score if you've actually had change. So that, you know, that being able to adapt is really important. So we've implemented it as a logic engine with machine learning. Awesome. Um, she said at first she thought the responses were open-ended, but I see it's a multiple choice now. Okay, good, good. Okay, I think that's it for the questions. Unless someone else is typing as I'm thinking. Okay. Uh, everybody's saying this is a fantastic resource. Thank you so much. And I saw Tony and said, um, this is very, very good tech suit. Thank you for all you do for nonprofits. We thank you so much. Thank you. Um, I do I do have a reminder, and I'm so sorry. I should have mentioned this before. For those of you that are in the process of looking at new technology, um, you know, I realized we have a course that starts in July 28th, and the course actually is about choosing the right technology. So it, um, so the DAT helps you come up with a plan. And then once you have a plan, for example, you might say, oh, I need a CRM, right? And then that has a whole process to ensure that you pick the right CRM. So we give you recommendations, but even if you pick our recommendation, you still have to go through you know, like product demos, free trial periods, um, understanding what your budget should be, all of that. So this course, and I just realized we have this, so I wanted to make sure that you know, uh, it's starting on July 28th, and we have a special discount code, $100 discount on the course if you use this coupon code. So for those of you who are interested, I just want to make sure you know that that coupon for $100 off is available. Awesome. Thank you so much, Mona. And I apologize, we had lots of Zoom trouble um, today. So the closed caption was not available on the Zoom, but when we transcribe the video, it will be on the YouTube video. So expect that in your emails within 48 hours. And thank you so much, Mona. I will let you have the last words. Great webinar. Thank you so much. Thank you for all your time and attention. Please don't hesitate to reach out to us. You help us make these tools better. Um, we are constantly working on it. We are in phase three development right now of the digital assessment tool. We're already implementing all the amazing feedback that we've received from organizations that are using the tool. So we really want to make sure that this free um, tool is available. These resources are available to nonprofits as they transition to the cloud and become more digital. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And um, thank you for everything you do.